Hello everybody, welcome to Crafty Soup. My name is Misty. Today I have that supply stretcher video that I've been promising in the last few videos. And today we are gonna play with embossing folders. And if you're a scrapbooker and you think embossing folders are just for card makers, stick to the end and I have tips specifically on bringing these elements to your layouts. But first I need to cover just a little bit of the basics. Now I could do a whole video on using embossing folders with your embossing machines because there is such a wide variety of both machines and folders from 3D embossing folders like this one to the standard embossing folders to mini embossing folders. And I can't cover it all here. So I just wanna give you a quick couple of tips. All embossing machines use some sort of sandwich of platforms in order to die cut and emboss. And the sandwich for embossing is going to be different than die cutting. So be sure to read your machine's manual. Now you just saw me set aside some extra cardstock and that is shimming. And when you add that to your sandwich, it puts more pressure. So if you've got your design coming out and it doesn't seem deep enough to you, go ahead and add those shims back into your sandwich and that can help you get a deeper impression. And on the other end of that problem is if the pressure is too hard, it can crack your cardstock. So if there's a way to reduce the pressure by removing some layers, try that. However, a lot of the time that's just not practical. So my tip here is to have a spritz bottle of water and give your cardstock just a very light spritz or two of water before running it through your machine. And that will often soften the paper enough to make it more pliable so it bends instead of cracks. All right, with quick tips out of the way, let's talk about techniques. And so the first technique I have is go ahead and emboss a whole bunch of panels in whatever patterns you enjoy. And then grab some ink because we are going to highlight these panels. And this can be a little tricky depending on your ink pad, how juicy it is, depending on your embossing, how deep or high the embossing is. And you want to use a light touch with this. And I do like smaller ink pads, but give it a go with bigger ink pads if that's what you have. So just barely kiss the ink pad to the surface of those raised bumps. Now embossing has a front side and a back side. So one side is debossed where the material goes down instead of up. And then the reverse side is embossed where it goes up. And you can try this um, inking technique on both sides. It is often used on the embossed side, on the raised image side. But go ahead and flip your paper over and give it a try on that side as well. Now I didn't do that here, but you can experiment with that and let me know how it goes. This technique can be a little imperfect as some of the ink might smudge down onto the flat edge of the paper, but just be patient and practice. And keep in mind that you can just highlight certain areas of the image. You don't have to do the whole thing either. Let's move on to the next technique, which is embossing shapes. And there's a couple ways to do this. You can emboss your panel first and then create your shapes using punches or dies. And we'll talk more about dies in a minute. One thing to keep in mind is that you kind of want to match up the size of your punch or die with the size of your embossing. Um, a bigger pattern like this should go with a bigger punch, but if you have a smaller pattern, then you can use pretty much any size punch. And then you'll have some lovely embellishments. And the second way to do this is to create your shapes first, either punching or die cutting. And die cutting is affected through this process, so we'll talk again about that in a minute. Once you have your shapes, you can just tuck those into your embossing folder and run them through your machine as you would any other way. But what I want to show you next is a partial embossing technique. Now you can do this with a full panel, but I think this is more fun with shapes. And what you're going to do is just put your shape into the edge of your embossing folder. This folder is so big that I only have the end edge to work with here. I will put it in there partially covering up that pattern. And then I'm going to use some low tack tape to tape my shape into place. I am going to be sure to tape it to the back of my shape because any pressure on that tape will imprint into your shape. So if that tape is on top of your shape, you'll get the shape of the tape also. 
And once it comes out of the machine, you'll have just an edge of your shape and half of your shape will be not embossed. Now this maybe isn't the, the best uh, shape to work with for this because it has a curvy edge. I think it's more fun when you see a, a straight edge. And just like with the full panels, anything, any shape that you emboss um, or partially emboss, you can also hit with the ink pad for that highlighting technique as well. And here I am just cleaning up some of my excess ink. Like I mentioned earlier, that can be a problem with that highlighting technique. But a sand eraser and a craft knife scraping away and rubbing away at that excess ink and you can repair many things. Now some embossing folders are directional, so if you want a certain direction, then you may want to use the side of your embossing folder, which means you'll have to use an embossing folder that fits in your platform to leave enough room for your shape to hang off the edge. Okay, earlier I mentioned die cutting, so let's talk about that now. In general, you're going to want to die cut your shapes first and then go ahead and run them through the embossing folder because if you start off with an embossed panel and then run it through your die cutter, that die cutting machine is going to apply pressure to your shape and it's gonna flatten out some of your embossing. So I did do both here and it is a little hard to see, but the one on the right is cut first, emboss second, and you can see it's a bit more crisp in its embossing. Moving on, we are going to emboss metallic paper next, and this is a really cool effect. And as I was showing the paper off, I caught my own reflection in my view screen, so I gave you a little wave. At any rate, I am going to be using some 3D uh, embossing folders for this, and because of the 3D-ness of the embossing folders, they have a thicker emboss to them, I wanted to spritz that paper on the back side so that it would not crack that metal. And here are two different patterns I did. And then we're gonna turn these patterns into some tiles. And I got this idea because of 10 tiles that is used in home decor. Now, even though I'm cutting them apart, you really don't have to. You can use the whole sheet as is. And in fact, as I show you this close up, that whole sheet totally reminds me of like a metal plate in a road or a garage. And so that can make a great masculine element if you have a guy that's into cars or machinery of sorts. And on the other end of the spectrum, if we use this as actually 10 tile patterns, and this cathedral window pattern that I'm cutting apart here is one of those patterns that um, looks like 10 tiles, you can start seeing bigger shapes show up as I put these back together. That can work towards more of an elegant mood for something like wedding photos, anniversary photos, and so on and so forth. So this one material can go in multiple directions. All right, next up is one of my favorite techniques, which is faux letterpress. And this technique is based on the shape of embossing folders, where one side has a raised edge that presses into the other side. And that's what a letterpress, like an invitation or something does. So the left side here is the raised edge, which will press down into the right side there and vice versa. So you can ink up either one of these sides and I will show you both. But if you have a sparse pattern of raised edges, you can run into some challenges with your ink sinking into areas you don't want them to. A brayer can help depending on your pattern, but like I'm doing with this particular pattern, it's still too sparse. And even with a brayer, that ink is um, getting into areas I don't want it to instead of just being on those raised areas. Now, actual letter pressing is a technique of pressing inked letters into paper to get both that debossed look along with inking. So I do prefer that method. However, you can ink up the flat side of your embossing panel and get uh, kind of the reverse of a letter press where you're getting the outside edge inked and not just the inside letters. And because I'm talking about letter pressing, I am using an actual letter word embossing folder here, but you can do this technique with any shape embossing folder and I will do that in a moment. So when I pull this out of my machine, carefully lift it up so you don't smudge that ink, you can see the places where um, the ink could not sink into the embossing folder. 
and you are left with a colored panel. Now, my machine is, uh, um, pressure is a bit uneven, so that is part of the reason why I have um, some of the edges look a little uneven. But this particular uh, folder has fun words on it, so I cut apart that word as an embellishment. Now here I've got another folder that has a much smaller design to it. So in this case, I really can brayer the ink over that raised embossing area and really get that faux letterpress look. Now these are polka dots instead of letters, but when it comes out of the machine, you'll see what the end result is. So, so far I've been using Distress Oxide ink, which is a bit creamier and thus kind of stickier. Uh, plastic does not like to stick to water-based products. It beads up in general. However, go ahead and try any of your basic water-based dye inks that you have. I've had good results with this. Um, I just am very careful to spread the ink really evenly. And now here you can see because of the pressure of my machine and because of the fact that uh, dye-based inks dry faster, you, you might get a little bit more unevenness. I am gonna wrap up this technique using different colors. So far, I've just been using white paper with colorful inks, but use any paper color and any ink color combos that you like. And for this one, I am actually gonna do both sides of the paper. So here is the raised embossed letterpress side, and here is the flat or the debossed letterpress size. And you can see how different that wood grain came out with the different sides. So that is it for the technique portion of this video, but not for the video itself, because like I said earlier, I do have scrapbooker specific tips for you in just a moment. As we take a look at these outgoing photos, you can see some of the pros and potential cons to some of these techniques. Hopefully I gave you enough info on how to avoid and or correct those challenges that you might run into. And I'd love to know what is your favorite of this bunch, or if you have another one that you love even more, drop me a comment below. All right, my scrapbooking friends, this is the part that I've been promising. Let's talk about using these elements for scrapbooking. With the right size photo and panels, you can mat your photos. With any size pieces, you can create embellishment clusters. Don't forget to balance out your clusters around your layout. Partially embellished pieces can be great places for a date or a little bit of journaling. And you can always use shapes and pieces as layers behind other elements, including uh, a little title strip and your photo mat. Another way to use these is to create a belly band or a big wide strip across your layout. If you have multiple panels of the same pattern, especially if it's a repeating pattern, you can overlap them and glue them together to create one longer band for your layout. If you don't like to see those um, seams on the pieces, go ahead and hide them with other page elements like your photos or perhaps a larger photo mat with a smaller photo. Now instead of a big band, you can cut your panels down to smaller strips, overlap them the same way if you need to, and create stripes or borders or edges or mix and match various pattern and create lots of stripes going down in rows down your layout. That would be really fun. And like I mentioned earlier, you can create layers for your photo mat. Um, here I'm just using different panels instead of embellishments to create lots of layers. You can always cut your layers apart that are in the background to stretch them to make them appear even bigger than they actually are. Um, along with this idea of creating these big matted areas, you can do that with photos, but you can also do that for a title block. And if we take a look at the metallic that we used earlier, remember I said that whole piece would be great for a masculine layout, but here I'm gonna show you another way to use those cut apart tiles that we talked about for doing a photo border frame. And this is another way to bring in an elegant element to these metallic embossed pieces. And yes, I'm mixing and matching patterns here, but I probably wouldn't do that in on an actual layout. I just didn't have enough pieces cut. But you could also use these strips to create a shelf for your layout and start your layout that way for another take on an elegant look. And with that, I've wrapped up the month of November of 2022. 
Uh, I will be back in December with some videos, but honestly, I don't know what I've got up my sleeve yet. I've got some ideas and hopefully I will narrow them down and bring you some smaller inspiration for the busy month of December. Thank you so much for being here and for watching. Until next time, have an artful day.